Hello folks, it's Chris in Arena Recording Studio. Uh, today I'm going to chat about something that I see so often with every single student that comes into the studio. And it's three things and then I'm going to show you how I apply them to the, to the practice routines that I work on with the students, okay? The first one that I see is lack of patience. You know, you're not going to suddenly become a reasonable guitar player overnight. You have to put the shifts in, you have to put the time in and, and show that you're committed. So. What happens with most players at first is they come in, they, they, they struggle with the patient side of things because they expect it all to happen overnight, which doesn't materialise. And then what kind of happens is you become frustrated, you look for other alternative ways of learning this lick that you're trying to learn, and then it becomes literally uh, an environment where it doesn't, it's not productive at all. Um, so the, one of the other reasons why is you become frustrated and you suffer with lack of patience when you're learning an instrument at first is structure. You don't have structure in place of knowing what you're going to play. So the three things that I'm going to mention today, patience, structure and commitment are critical to getting good at guitars. When people say to me, oh, I've been playing for 12 years, 15 years, Chris, you know, you should be of a reasonable standard after that amount of time. Um, so the reasons why you either haven't got the patience to put the time into practice or you haven't got the structure and know exactly what to practice to get to your, uh, you know, to unlock your achievements and get your goals. And the other thing is commitment. You know, if you haven't got the commitment to put that time in, then you're not going to get anything out of this at all. So the most frustrating part for me is when I see somebody who comes into the studio and I've had students that have been coming to me for over 12 years. And then I've also, I also get students that come through the door and within two or three lessons, I can tell that they are not going to stay the duration of the period of getting into the realms of being a reasonably good guitar player. I'm not saying where you're a virtuoso, but you should be able to carry a few tunes and maybe play a few licks and things like that, or maybe even look at having a bit of fun with the band, you know, with a few friends playing along with other musicians. So it's all down to patience, structure and commitment, you know. So here's a classic example of what I see. The ones that come in and have been coming to me for 10, 12 years and above, which is a mammoth amount of time to be having lessons, um, because they get that structure, they know that they're committed to having these weekly lessons and that's how they get as good as what they do. Um, and they've also got that patience in place to go, do you know what? Rome wasn't built in a day and it's a continuous journey that I'm on as a guitar player to get better and better as am I, as is every other single guitar player or teacher out there that, that goes down this journey of musical pleasure. Okay, so the other extreme to this is the guys who come into the studio and like I say, within two or three lessons, I can tell whether you're going to be right for this job and I see so many that come in and after a month or two months, of trying to practice say open chords or trying to learn them and they can't put the structure in place they don't listen to what I tell them to practice um, so they go off at a tangent and say well I've practiced for 15 hours a week or whatever and I'll say brilliant that's amazing that's an incredible amount of time what have you been practicing ah well I didn't do that bit that you showed me Chris because I thought I'd try this well this is where you're going wrong. People have to listen, you know, and, and this is the pitfalls that I see with a lot of guitar students. So like I say, I can tell within a, a couple of lessons whether they're going to be the ones that kind of make it or not. The other sort of, like an analogy is like, these kind of people are the ones that say, I'm going to learn to ride a bike, and I'm going to ride that bike 100 yards to the shops. They get 20 yards in, they're tired, they fall off, they fall off again, and they think, do you know what, I'm going to walk. So that day they walk to the shop, the next day they get up, they get in the car, they go to the shop, they're always looking for an alternative route to get to where they need to be. Then after about four or five days of walking and traveling in the car, they suddenly go, do you know what? I'm gonna pick up the bike again and I'm gonna try again. Only this time they get 10 yards and fall off and then they start the whole procedure again. It's that lack of commitment. If you wanna to learn to ride a bike, you have to get on that bike every single day then it becomes easy where your subconscious delivers this and you don't have to think about it. Playing an instrument is exactly the same. If you haven't got that focus, if you haven't got that patience to stick with it and that commitment and then the structure to know what you're going to need to work on to make progress, then you are going to massively, massively underachieve at what you're trying to, you know, trying to achieve as a guitar player. 
this sounds really brutal what I'm saying, but really I'm just trying to help as many people play the guitar and fulfill the wishes of getting good on the instrument as is possible. So sometimes I've got to be a little bit brutal. You know, I get people that come in and you don't even practice week to week and then they wonder why they don't make any progress. You want to be one of those? Fine. But it's kind of wasting my time and it's wasting your time and it's not going to sort of move you forward really. So it's kind of a slap on the wrist chat this one, but I'm going to apply this now, what I'm talking to you about on how I would work on something. So again, if you're trying to learn a bar chord or a lick, let's pick a lick, let's pick a, a little phrase here. So say I wanted to learn something like that, a little tiny lick in, in C major or A minor. Um, I would think to myself, right, I know I'm not going to practice this, this lick and learn this within a week or a month even. I'm prepared to put the commitment in. This is the side of this commitment and patience thing. You know, you're going to get frustrated working on things. You're going to think, oh, what if I jump on the bike today and then the car tomorrow? Will I get better at going to the shops? Well, you might do, but you're not going to get good on both things. So again, if I would look at this with my, I now know what I'm going to work on. The structure is in place for me to practice because even now, after all these years of playing guitars, I'll only ever work on one thing. I won't work on four, five, six different things like most people tend to do. You'll see them where they work on chords, scales, rhythm, theory, all this kind of stuff. Theory is great. You can do theory in your own time. You can study that. You can read that as and when you want to. And I highly recommend it. Um, but working on licks and phrases and riffs, one at a time I go for. So what was that lick that I played then? Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm normally a stand up when I play, uh, when I practice. I always prefer to stand up and, and practice. The reason why is when you sat down, you're kind of in this position. Everything's a little bit skewed, shoulders are at different heights, but when you actually put a strap on or, or stand up, you're in a completely different position. Notice how the shoulders are leveled up, the guitar's different, there's less stress and strain on ligaments and tendons. And I also practice in the same position just by some freaky chance that I may possibly go and do a gig at some point in the future. I don't have to kind of relearn and reset all those muscles from that position to this. So this is kind of emulating my standing up on stage position, even though I'm sitting down. Um, and the lick that I'm going to work on, so this is it, I've got say 10 minutes. This is all I'm going to put onto this. So today I'm going to go. A little picked exercise. Now once I've got that. I'm listening to the quality of the detail of the see the mistake as I advanced in speed there there's a little blip that popped out at me that tells me that that's the threshold that I'm at for that lick now normally then I would think what caused it was it a mispick was I too much pick movement, too much tension in my fretting hand, all these things I analyse, then I try again. So it's a quality practice that you're looking at. Now if I was building speed, I would probably go and cycle it over. So that again, there's a slight synchronicity. Is that even a word? Is that the right word? I'm slightly out of sync there and I am being brutally honest with what I'm trying to achieve. So I'll go again. And the level of focus goes woof on everything that you're trying to do because it's a skill that you're trying to absorb. So again, a little burst like that. I won't, I won't do mammoth cycling licks over and over and over, maybe three, four, five, six times, then stop because you take that pressure off the ligaments and the tendons that you're kind of stressing because it's a new skill that you're trying to develop, a new physical movement. So again,
So that was a lot better, there's a couple of little fluffs, but again, I can feel that I'm starting to relax into this a little bit. I rest, take, I let go of the fingerboard, I'm resting left and right hands there, all that tension is gone. Then I'm ready to go again. <laughs> So again, it's, there's a couple of little fluffs, but the majority of what I'm playing is correct in how I'm trying to do it. I might even try and push the speed a little bit more now and see what threshold I can reach before it fails. And I'm also trying to focus on minimum pick movement and minimum amount of tension as I'm fretting the notes on this. And the faster you go, the more things fly, fingers fly off. Um, pick movements get a little bit more erratic and, and larger and it causes errors as you're playing. So think about the control element of anything that you're trying to learn, whether it's a chord, a scale or a lick. So now I'm going to see whether I can go even faster with this, which is probably going to be a bit of a train wreck, but we'll try. So I'll just start off and see where I feel. Probably about as fast as I'm ever going to get with that, I would say. I'm not that bothered about bursting speed barriers, but it's an example of how I focus and concentrate on getting the one thing right. Then, guess what? Tomorrow... I go again, and the day after again and again and again, because what you do then, as the more you develop it, and your ligaments and tendons get used to it, the more the tension soaks away and it starts to become uh, a kind of effortless way of playing. You have to go through this process to, to develop the skills that you want to do. So again, that exercise shows exactly how I've got to be patient to get to that certain level of match fitness as a guitar player. The structure is the one thing that I know. I'll practice that for 10 minutes every single day for maybe two weeks, three weeks till I have got that done. But imagine if it was a month to get that from zero where you're learning it to being able to play it competently and accurately. That's 12 exciting advances in a year of your playing. And it's down to this commitment and structure and having the patience to do it. You must commit to doing the same thing over and over and over till you get it right. Uh, then, you know, once you've done what you're working on for 10 minutes, then play. Reward yourself by putting a backing track on and jamming over the top and all these kind of things. I've actually uploaded a backing track to the channel. Um, I will be putting some videos out there very soon on playing with melodic feel. Uh, it's a nice kind of melodic backing track where we can put some emotion in there rather than just playing the pentatonics. I'm going to explain how I approach melodic style um, playing and, and those kinds of stuff that float a lot of people's boats. It's one of the questions I get asked a lot in the studio is, how do you play with that feel and that melody, Chris? So we're going to touch on that at some point, and I've already put the track up there for you. So if you root around the channel, you'll find it's in A minor. So again, a recap. Have the patience, because it's not going to happen overnight. Have the structure. Know what you're going to perfect every single day that you pick that guitar up till you've got it perfect. And that is the commitment. That's going to take time. It might be a week. It might be a fortnight. For you in America, that's two weeks and it might be a month or two months, six months, it doesn't matter, you have to stick with that commitment. When people are good at an instrument or good at something, it's just purely down to the fact that they've put that commitment in and they really enjoy what they do, so they'll do it regularly, okay? So it's just in a nutshell, a few little things there to help you to practice. Think about your structure, think about your commitment, think about the end goal of what you're trying to work on and just put it all together and you will get there, but don't be the guy that jumps on the bike, goes for a walk, jumps in the car, back on the bike, because trust me, all you're doing is prolonging the agony of failing as a guitar player. Make sure you commit and make sure you understand fully what you're gonna practice to get good. If you have any comments and you wanna ask me any questions about this, please fire them uh, off to me and I'll have a little look and I'll, if I've got the ability to answer those questions, then I will do and if I haven't I'll hold my hands up and say it's a bit beyond me or whatever you know we're all in this journey together as being guitar players and musicians and and I always like to finish off by thanking you all for subscribing to my channel and as always it's me Chris saying stay safe stay well 
and keep on rocking in the free world.